Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Hands up, who expected me to do this? We've made a void room out of the white map that I made in the last episode. And some of you guys, I imagine, have probably seen this little trick before, but it's kind of fun to create. This is simple. It, it looks really, really big on the out. I mean, you can't really tell what it is from the outside, but you could be walking around in an infinite void except when you go into third person mode it's kind of obvious how far away the walls are uh, and, and here we actually have a whole bunch of item frames and maps with our white map on it and at the end here we have the thing we're going to be focusing on once again for today's episode we have the cartography table and i want to go over a function of the cartography table before we get started because it's something i purposefully left out of yesterday's episode because it's really going to concern what we are doing today today we're going to be going back out i've got a couple of uh, lights in there by the way because evening out the balance of light is kind of important to creating those void rooms because as soon as you get a shadow in there it's kind of obvious where the panels of the map are but if you create a decent amount of light in those rooms you will actually not really be able to tell where the walls are so it's it's kind of integral to the trick anyway what we're going to do today is talk about locking maps in the cartography table because we've put together this giant blank white map and i kind of want to do some stuff with the white map in future it would be kind of nice to at least have a version of this that we could keep and so the first thing we're going to do is cover something about the cartography table and we're going to lock a map in here we're going to put that down and we're going to grab a glass pane from inside here we're going to grab a couple of those and by putting a glass pane in the map what you end up with is a locked map and this is a brand new concept in minecraft 1.14 previously it was not possible to lock a map this way and now it is and once we lock that up that map is going to stay that way permanently but it is not going to stack with the other maps in your inventory that is your first clue and there you go it's updated to say it is now locked so the purpose of locking maps might be quite immediately apparent to those of you who have played on multiplayer servers and attempted something like this before because if anybody makes any alterations to that map and looks at their copy of the map those alterations will happen to any of those maps that have been hung up in item frames and it is quite easy to vandalize large areas where you have done map art the advantage of having a lockable map now is that you can lock it once you've drawn a bunch of stuff and that map is never going to change and it is still possible to clone it in the cartography table it's not possible to expand it but it is possible to make copies of these maps and so now whatever we end up doing in this episode to this stack of maps that we've got here the ones that we are going to be ultimately turning into the minecraft survival guide title logo this map here the second one that we've just locked is going to remain completely blank not only that but once we have completed our minecraft survival guide logo on here we can lock that map as well completely erase it and the writing will still be there so that's going to be something that we could even use the same canvas area to make multiple maps like this and then terraform it again and bring all of the scenery back and even turn it into something else if we want to and the maps are going to remain the same it certainly takes up a lot less space in the world if you do this and it means you don't have to flatten out multiple large areas of the terrain in order to get yourself a bunch of maps as long as you want the same color background but then you could just as easily build a different color background by placing 16,000 or so blocks in the area we've already dug out and you would get yourself a completely different map entirely so that's the plan and so i wanted to demonstrate locking these maps early just in case anybody thought i'd forgot it from yesterday's episode and what we're going to do is head back over to our snow plains that we dug out take a look at it before we change it for good and turn it into a copy of the minecraft survival guide logo and a couple of the villagers have made their way out of the nether portal from that tundra village that i discovered the other day they are kind of keen on wandering in here I, I should probably put up a barrier of sorts but if we put some beds around here we could have ourselves a little nether outpost kind of like what we've done in the end i suppose that'd be pretty funny but they uh they seem to have no problems here there are even some cats have wandered through here from the village and i wonder if the villagers in the overworld if they had enough beds for the population of the village before they might even end up repopulating out here because they think that their friends have vanished. Was there a, 
Was there a baby back there or was that just a villager further away? I can't really tell. That's the funny thing about villagers is that the small villagers are basically these villagers scaled down, whereas with other baby like animals and stuff in Minecraft, they tend to have large heads and small bodies, so you can kind of tell when one is a baby. But I think that was probably just a regular villager. I think I was probably just seeing things. Oh, one of the cats has just wandered onto our picture. And by the way, mobs and stuff wandering onto here will not affect the picture in any way. In fact, even if you were to do this with full blocks and not snow layers and put torches everywhere to light this up and prevent mobs from spawning, you would end up not seeing the torches on there because they still count as too small to appear as blocks on the map. At least it was at the last count. I'm fairly certain that is still the case. But if we take a look at this from the sky, you can see quite the scale of the area that we're dealing with here, as if you couldn't see that from the ground, I know. But like, it's a large, large area we are working with here. It's going to be 128 blocks long, 128 blocks wide, as we discussed yesterday. And this is going to be the canvas for a logo and we're going to build the minecraft survival guide title card like the, the the minecraft logo basically and then the text on the top and bottom and we're going to be able to put this up all over our world to say that this is the minecraft survival guide world now naturally depending on how creative you are feeling you can build basically whatever you want here as long as you can shrink it down into the size of a 128 by 128 block square and we are not going to freehand this because i'm really not good at estimating scale and stuff like that so I think the best thing to do is going to be to come out of Minecraft to put this into a graphics program like Photoshop or GIMP, which is free if you don't have Photoshop, that kind of stuff. We're going to be able to shrink it down to 128 by 128 block size. We're going to make sure all of the detail and stuff is there. We can mess a little bit with the scale if we need to, and we're going to make sure that it's going to look fantastic when we put it here in the Minecraft world. So here we are in Photoshop, which is some software I own. I am definitely not a Photoshop guru, and I imagine that when you look at this, if you are familiar with Photoshop, you will probably be able to identify a hundred better ways of doing what I'm about to do. But this is what I'm going to do to show you the process of doing this stuff. And yes, there are tools out there. There are websites. There are things that can help you. There are even things that can generate map art for you and have a downloadable map file that you just drag into your world and it replaces an existing region of the world somewhere and allows you to just have that stuff available to you quickly. You can download that stuff. You don't necessarily have to go through it step by step, but this is the Minecraft survival guide. I'm doing things here in survival as you might do maybe on a multiplayer server where you don't have access to the behind the scenes files, the admins aren't cool with you editing maps into the world and that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is try and go through this a little bit step by step. So what I have here is the logo. I hesitate to call it a logo because it's really the Minecraft logo just with some text I've superimposed over it. But this is the title card that comes up at the start of every Minecraft survival guide world. It's also the image I use for my thumbnail. Normally it's split out into layers but for the purposes of this I've just merged them all down to one layer. We've got a white background that I can apply to it because the grid in the background where you can see there is transparency is not really going to help. In fact it's probably going to put me off if I can see it all the time and we're going to be laying a grid over the top of this and it's important that the grid measurements we're using are going to be sort of accurate so so this is the minecraft survival guide title art it's on a canvas of 1280 by 1280 pixels because i work with my thumbnails in 1280 by 720 to reduce the file size when i upload them to youtube because youtube has a maximum thumbnail size of two megabytes which is weird but anyway uh well, what you've got here is the minecraft survival guide logo oh, i'm going to what you've got here is the Minecraft Survival Guide title treatment on a square canvas. And as you can see, it just sits there in the middle. We might actually end up doing some stuff around the outside of here if we want to like art it up a little bit later on. But for now, all I want to do is get this text and the Minecraft logo into the world as a map. So what we're going to do is we're going to enable the grid. <laughs> it sounds very Tron, doesn't it? The grid. So what we're going to do is if you go to view, show, and then grid, you can enable a grid here. There's also a keyboard shortcut for it. And you'll be able to go to the preferences, wherever the preferences are in this bizarre program. There we go. Guides, grids, and so forth. And we have set it up so there is a grid line every 10 pixels, meaning it divides the image into 10 pixel squares. And if you think about it, dividing 1280 by 10, you get 128. And that is the number of basically pixels we can work with if we're using a 128 by 128 area map. Obviously, you could make your map even bigger if you want a ton more detail. You can make it into a higher scale map 
but that's going to require you to flatten out a lot more terrain. It's going to take up a lot of space. It's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be four times as much work as I've already put in. So we're going to stick with one map for now and sacrifice the detail a little bit. But what we're going to do is enable the grid like so, and we're going to zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, this is breaking up the image into lots of individual squares from which, if I don't mess up with the scroll bar here, I can approximate what I'm going to put into each square of the map. And this will help you measure stuff. Obviously, you can draw lines and stuff all over this if you want to. You can sketch it out. You can count things if you need to. But what you're going to get here is approximate ideas of what blocks will go into which square on this 128 by 128 grid that you can then use to build the map design in your Minecraft world. And you can do this with basically any picture. In this case, obviously, because we're doing this in Photoshop and we're not doing it using a kind of fancy program that's going to translate all of this stuff for you, the choice of blocks is up to you. There are programs out there and, and web tools and stuff like that which will basically boil everything down to this is the closest block to the color palette you're working with. This is how you can make this look like pixel art. And a lot of the time, those will be really weird block choices. Like there'll be kind of a, a, a gray terracotta in this place because it looks like it's got that kind of gray mixed with a little bit of the white and that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go too heavy on that stuff. I'm just going to stick to it being basic materials because those are the ones that you'll be able to acquire in large quantities. So we'll probably need some snow or some white concrete, just some easily acquirable white material for the lettering of the survival guide. The Minecraft section we might do in stone or something that's a little bit more gray. We'll probably get some gray concrete here. And then we'll need a lot of black blocks, which is going to probably be black concrete, maybe some regular gray concrete, not some light gray for the kind of lettering underneath here. I think this should be fairly straightforward. And the diagonal lines and stuff will probably work out as we go. It's not going to look as crisp as the original logo does, of course. And there's a lot of diagonals in this, which is going to be a little bit tricky. But in terms of creating pixel art on your maps and that kind of stuff, if you're interested in getting like a video game looking character, like a kind of Mario or a Pokemon design that you really like or something like that, you can very easily apply this grid over it if you've got the image at the right size and resolution and you'll be able to figure out exactly where the pixels fit together. And if there's a lot more straight lines in it, then so much the better. Unfortunately, I'm using kind of curvy text and stuff as well, but we will do our best with what we've got. And hopefully, when we put this in the world, this is going to look okay. So this is something a little bit different. I decided that instead of just giving you a time lapse with music, I would try and narrate over this one a little bit. This is the first time I've really done something like this, so bear with me. By the way, this was all recorded during a live stream using a mod called the Replay Mod, which I'm going to have linked in the description. It is a fantastic mod that currently works with the Fabric Mod Loader, and I've used it extensively in the past for things like my One Chunk tutorial series, which you might see a little bit of a throwback here to with what I'm doing right now, placing all of this coloured wool. Essentially, this just helps me mark out a grid. There are sections of four different colours of wool, and if I'm looking for something that's at a specific point in a grid, then having it be able to be counted out very easily by using multiple colours of wool is really helpful for what I'm going to do right now, which is draw the lettering. The first thing I needed to start with is the logo Minecraft, not least because I wanted to use the Minecraft logo as a completely separate map. And once I finished the lettering here, I actually go ahead and lock the map and I've produced a Minecraft Survival Guide logo one separately because of the fantastic ability to be able to lock maps with the cartography table now. So you might have seen me sketch out the M a couple of times there. I was kind of getting a feel for the scale. And because the M is a really large character, I immediately got worried that I wasn't going to be able to fit everything in the space. But thankfully, throughout drawing out all of these letters and just sketching everything out in kind of lines at first so I didn't have too much stuff to take down if it all went wrong, it turned out that the grid method worked really well for the Minecraft lettering specifically because it was big enough and bold enough and thankfully enough of it was straight lines more or less that I was able to sketch it out without too much fuss. You'll notice I go back and tweak a couple of things as we go but that's just because there were a few things like the T felt a little bit squished in at the end and the creeper in the A was a little bit off and I felt like that probably needed shrinking down to make a little bit more room for the T and so on. Once I'd done the lettering I had to block out the areas underneath the Minecraft logo that are shaded, and that really helped it feel a little bit more put together. There we go, corrected the F and the T there, and then went ahead and did the rest of the shading, because that's really what makes this logo stand out. Instead of just being a flat thing, it feels like it's got some dimensionality to it. 
And the funny thing about this is that the shading looked good with the grey concrete powder that I'm using here. All of this is black and grey concrete powder for the most part, but the grey concrete looked better when it had some of the shadow from the blocks next door, like we showed with the uh, the kind of terrain that was on the map previously. That shadow from a block that is one block to the north of it and, and one block up actually really helped. So what I've done in the shading, instead of just giving a flat area, I've actually made a staircase of grey concrete, which you can sort of see in this time lapse but the uh, the whole idea behind shading those areas out was to keep it kind of dark looking and the gray concrete was the perfect color but just needed to be slightly more shadowy once i'd done that i tried this out and immediately really liked it so this is a pixel art technique called dithering where you effectively kind of alternate in a checkerboard pattern the different colors you want to use and that creates if you're looking at it from a distance a really subtle sort of gradient and between these gray colors it really worked out i'm using the gray concrete powder again i'm using cobblestone for most of it and then in the end i end up switching to light gray concrete powder which does actually have a different color on a map to cobblestone and natural stones so that turned out really well I had to go away and make some of that, but in the end I came back and I managed to get the rest of the lettering done and add in the grey concrete. And this is really where it started to come together for me. While we were doing this on the live stream, I was a little bit worried that some of the letters looked a little bit weird. The line art for them really didn't look good, but once you have all of that shading in place, I think this ended up looking really great. And I was so happy with how the Minecraft logo lettering turned out, which is why when I got to this point, I just said, yes, we have to absolutely take a map of this and lock it down. Now, of course, the problem with that was the wool boundary was still going to be there. So I ended up taking down the entire wool boundary. And then once I realized that I wasn't going to be able to uh, find enough snow layers for that, I ran out of snow layers in my inventory. I went and got my army of snow golems and we zambonied around the edge of it like so. So you can see me dragging the snow golems around there before we've put the finishing touches. And I go ahead and lock the map with the Minecraft logo on it. I looked at this from the sky a couple of times during the process of it, and I was so happy with the results. Then it came to doing the text for the, the text that I'd imposed over the top of it. And the font I use is called Riffic Free. It can be downloaded a bunch of different places. It's a 100% free font, and it was very difficult to get the lettering down right. You'll notice I have tons of trouble with the E at the top there. I'm not a particularly artistically gifted person, believe it or not, so the uh, the E was really, really troublesome for me, and rendering that in blocks at the scale I was going to was a problem. The next problem came when I wanted to fit the word survival guide under here because it quickly became apparent that I wasn't going to be able to build it at the scale that I had it in the graphic. And once I get as far as the V in survival, you'll notice I'm already trying to like slim down the letters a little bit. It was quickly becoming obvious that it wasn't going to work out, so I moved the whole thing back. So the survival guide lettering is not in the position it is in my title card, it just sort of had to shift over a little bit and I was really worried that we wouldn't even fit the word guide in at the end without going off the edge of the map but luckily eventually as you're going to see that worked out but as a result the words survival guide look like they are in very different type of font to the type of font that I use naturally so it's kind of its own thing now it's not really based on Riffic anymore I just kind of had to freestyle it a little bit you'll notice I had trouble getting the G to work a little bit here as well the rounded letters are just so difficult to uh to, to handle when you're building them out of blocks but eventually we got there and frankly I'm really happy with the way this turned out <laughs> well you managed to fix up that E did a little bit more shading around the outside to give it a bit of a a drop shadow feel with the concrete powder and I'm really happy with the result. I think it looks fantastic. Ultimately though, the big test of this is how it's going to look on a map when we have it there in our Minecraft world, in our hand, in an item frame or anything like that. So let's hop back into Minecraft and I'm going to show you guys the finished result. Well folks, it's been great to record with the replay mod and here we are over the finished result, which only really looks great from the top down, like the, uh, the lines on the, some of the letters seem a little bit thick from a distance but if you look at it from the top there that's really quite something special isn't it but really the absolute treat of this is looking at it in map form and i've already locked off a couple of these maps in preparation are you ready i think i'll show you the one where it just says minecraft first so you can get a look at this firsthand look at that <laughs> i'm really really happy with this and i really wish you could get the hud out of the way when i show you these things but unfortunately if i press f1 it just removes the entire thing map and all so instead i'll put it here 
on this for us to look at. And that right there is pretty cool lettering. I think that turned out very, very well. I'm so happy with like the gradient feel of it with the dithering thing I was talking about in the time lapse. So that's that's super cool. And the final reveal of the Minecraft Survival Guide logo map. Here it is. <laughs> and the, like I said, the lettering feels a little bit weird. It feels a little bit kind of cartoonish somehow, but I like it. I like it a lot. I think it worked out really well. And having stepped away from it and come back to it, I think we could have done better in a way, but I'm just happy just having it right now. And maybe we can come back and tidy this thing up later or add some details around the outside. But for now, I want to make an infinity room with this logo in it <laughs> right about now. I think it's going to be great having the Minecraft survival guide up on the wall. So that, I think, is where we're going to end today's episode. <laughs> Amidst our triumph and standing on the map that we have done, that's going to be all for this episode of the Minecraft survival guide. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed today's episode. Bit of a mixed media episode, but I was having a lot of fun, and I hope you guys did too. Don't forget to leave a like on this if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.